Hey folks, I'm just going to go over quickly how to make the tileable material or tileable texture inside of ZBrush. Um, this is just a brief introduction, but hopefully you folks can take this and run with it. Uh, before I start, let's just go ahead and make a mess in ZBrush. Hold on. It's Control N. So the first thing I'm going to do is bring in a PolyMesh 3D uh, primitive plane. And I always like to hit the Make Polymesh 3D tool immediately so I don't forget about it later. So from here, um, I can drag them out. And of course, ZBrush is going to continue to put them onto the canvas until I hit T or Edit. And I get this little safety zone area uh, so that I know that I'm actually in a 3D view. To get rid of these extra ones that I may have put on there, just hit control in to clear the canvas. So there's my plane. If I hit F, I'll frame it. Um, so that looks pretty good. But what I want to do is change the canvas so that it fits it perfectly. So I'll turn off proportional and I'll change this to 1024 by 1024. And I'll resize it. And when resizing, you'll notice that the canvas is square, but it non proportionally scaled my little square. So I'll draw it out on the screen again, and uh, I'll hit Control N to make sure it's clear, and then hit T to go into the edit mode, then frame. So there's that guy again. Notice that the white frame is missing, and that only comes when you're so close to your document and the object uh, is larger than the frame that do you really notice it. So when I have the document zoomed out, I don't get that little white frame. Okay. So here's my uh, asset. The next thing I want to do is underneath the, the subtool, I'm going to just make a whole bunch of copies. So I'll go duplicate, 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 I'll make it four copies. And with each one of these, I'm going to go down to deformation and I'm going to offset them. And you know, sure, you could use a move tool, uh, they might be faster, but I'm okay with taking a little bit of time and I'm going to move these out positive and negative so I'll zoom out and you can see what I, I got going here and then the next two I'll go to sub tool and it's the bottom ones and I'll change the deformation this time from X to Y and I'll pull this one this way and then the last one go to Information for God. And I have to turn on the little flea size button one more time and pull this over. Okay, so now I have my cross, uh, it fits into the frame, and I have all these sub tools. Uh, at this point, I'm going to go up to the top one and I'm going to merge things down. So, merge down, I have everything merged down into one sub tool. If I hit Shift F, You'll see this kind of color coding. Each one of them is still respected to its own object. To help better communicate this, I'm going to go to poly groups and hit auto groups. And with this auto group setting, it has a more striking color grouping uh, difference, a little greater contrast in the color. So it makes it a little bit easier to discern. So there's that. Now, to isolate my view just to this center tile, I'll just hit Control Shift and it will isolate just to that tile. If I hit F, it will frame it. So from here, I, I can start with my tileable texture. So the next step I'm going to take is come up to Brush, and I'm going to turn it, I'll go to Curve, and I'm going to click on Wrap Mode here. If I hold down Control, I can give you a, a little textbook explanation of what wrap mode does but I set that to I meant to press one there's one and I can start to get a result where it's wrapping this onto the object and you'll notice that it didn't do on these other sides and we can start to see a little misgiving here so in order to frame it so I could see it this is what I recommend here's I can frame it I'm gonna click in a blank area and if I click here in a blank area, 
and then zoom out, everything else will churn out. So a little bit of a do -si do I'll frame the selection, I'll hold down control shift, click in the blank area, and now if I sculpt and zoom out, you'll see that it's sculpting across those seams and the curvature and the tangency of between the surfaces is a little bit better and hopefully will result in better maps. So that stuff's looking pretty good. Again, I'll frame this, click this off, and it should be good to go. From here, I'm going to go to geometry, and I'm going to divide it. Before I divide it, I'm going to turn off the smooth modifier. So let's go ahead and divide this up a little bit. Come back, and I'm starting to get a better result. I'm going to divide it up just a little bit more. I don't want to go too far. change this to freehand. I think I, uh, the performance of the computer is a little ha hammered by some other things that I have open. So I'm getting some of these results, but so far it's, it's, it's okay. I can turn on, I may have turned off uh, lazy mouse, so I'll turn on L, and there we go. I have a lot smoother result. zoom out, you can see how that is perfectly tiling. Okay, so zooming, uh, undoing a little bit. From here, I'm going to change to drag rectangle, and I'm going to pick uh, a few textures, alphas. I'm just kind of dragging these on. Now, I'd be careful with the type of alpha you pick. Um, I would recommend, you know, maybe more things like this. Um, I think I just definitely, either I have too much stuff open, I'm just going to go down another subdivision, delete higher, and see if it's more responsive. There we go. So, you know, I would go through and find alphas that work for you. This one's working better. And I can start to stretch this across. Now, one thing that I would make certain to avoid when making these tileable textures. Sometimes uh, you'll get little lines that will show up when you make these tileable textures. And if you start to see these little fissures that show up when you're using this type of tiling, be sure to kind of stop and undo it so that you save yourself some trouble later. But here I'm just kind of creating these. This is not really a, a there's that fissure. I was looking to see when it would break. So you see that little line. I'm going to undo that. And I think um, ZBrush just can't keep up. And it makes a, a quick approximation of what's going on when it gets to these larger sizes. So take your time. Be Keep eyeful of those type of lines. Um, there may be other ways to fix that. But it's difficult to fix it after the fact. So this is where we start to create textures that you know I've never seen before. There's a line again, so watch out for those. Let's switch this up and try something like this. There's that line again. And you can download alphas uh, a variety of sources. Um, ZBrush has a number of alphas you folks can use, um, but this is going to be a way to help build your your ground texture and make it timeable. Cool. Well, before I leave here, uh, Morgan made mention of changing the material to uh, normal material. And then we can go to document, export, and this is where I'd be able to save out a normal map version of that same tileable texture after you get happy with your sculpt. And you could also generate height maps 
and paint your uh, poly paint if you want to do that but I think that's kind of a dead end most materials on this current age of Unreal are really defined by their roughness and metallic uh, those per pixel pieces of channel information that will help su support a good height map and normal 